Welcome to the Seller Sessions with Beaver. Let's get this rolling. Hey, hi everybody. Thought it'd be fun to just kind of go through our state lineup uh, today and, and while we're here down the cellar and, and, and talk about it a little bit. So starting out with Sauvignon Blanc, one of my favorite wines, uh, came from a, our Dos Vinas vineyard. When we first acquired that vineyard, it only had two different grape varieties. Uh, today there's a little bit more, but uh, still got the Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, and it's a great, great grape from Paso Robles. It creates a nice crisp, uh, crisp wine. Not, not herbaceous, not, not overly grassy. It's got some of those nice characters. Uh, beautiful light straw color that we get uh, from, from these grapes. A little bit of melon in there, some peach, uh, also a 90 points from the wine enthusiast, which uh, just is a testament to our winemaking team. Even has a little hint of the uh, style you get from uh, New Zealand, which I really like. Um, real, real nice on the palate, real crisp. This is a great wine this time of year. Uh, to, to, to use while you're cooking your meal and maybe some of it in the meal, but uh, super with light fishes and, and uh, scallops, stuff like that. Hmm. Maybe a little peach in there too. Salami Blanc, 90 points, wine enthusiast, state wine, part of our stellar lineup on the state list. Um, Chardonnay. We uh, for, when we start, first started making Chardonnay back in the day, we thought we needed it to uh, uh, not be in Paso Robles because everybody said, "Oh, Paso Robles too hot for Chardonnay." So we were making our original Chardonnays with uh, fruit from Monterey and Santa Barbara counties. We kind of fell into that belief, but then we started working with our West Side vineyards, much cooler area. Uh, we, also discovered that we don't need to do malolactic fermentation because we, we don't have a ton of acidity, but enough as is and nicely balanced. So uh, we do a portion of it barrel fermented, which is really nice. Uh, helps with the, uh, the maturing of the wine. And then the balance is, is left on yeast leaves and they're stirred up and, and they help give a really nice uh, body and aroma to the wine. Getting a little little apple, a pear, and then a nice hint of oak. Oak's not overpowering, it's just a, a component you want to have to enjoy. Mm. Good way to start the day, a little Chardonnay. All day Chardonnay. This is good. Slightly chilled. I like when I'm tasting it like now. I don't really chill the wine that much because I can really get the aromas out of it. Um, but, uh, you know, not total refrigerator temperature, but cellar temp. Some, you know, somewhere around that. That's where I really feel the wine shines. And uh, again, this is from our Well Rock Vineyard. Yeah, predominantly, a little bit of Jackknife and Hog Heaven are also in the, in the, uh, the mix. And it is 100% Chardonnay, so great wine to enjoy. Um, really nice lingering finish to it also. So as you notice, as, as we move through these wines, I think uh, not all of them are, are uh, CCOF like this one, uh, but everything is trending that way. So all of our wines uh, moving forward will all be made from our organic vineyard. So we have about 1,500 acres now that's uh, certified organic, which is really awesome. It's, it's a neat tool in our quiver uh, when we're making wine, and, and, it, and it makes us stand out. There's not a lot of people that have that much uh, dedication to uh, organic. So we've been doing it over years, and we finally got everything certified, winery certified. So, uh, all of our wines are state wines, and then furthermore, they're gonna be made, always made from organic grapes. 
So the rosé is kind of a new, new thing in our lineup. Maybe this is the third vintage we've done. We like to use the Grenache from our uh, uh, Well Rock vintage. Pick it, pick it a little bit, little bit lower in sugar, so it's not not uh, too intense uh, in alcohol, but really, it's dry. Uh, again, really awesome summer wine. Got a nice salmon color to it, real crisp, and being a little bit slightly lower alcohol is something that you know won't, won't wear you out poolside. But this has been a real favorite at the taste room for everybody. Uh, just a really super enjoyable wine. Hmm. Now we get into our little bit of our heavy hitters. Um, Another uh, 90 point wine is our, uh, we're gonna do the Merlot next. Uh, and you know, Merlot for me, it, it's underappreciated. You know, it got, got a bad rap back in the day, but now it's uh, coming back quite strong. And again, made from organic grapes. It's got a 90 points with the, the wine enthusiast. A little softer in tannins in the, than uh, our Cabernet, for example, but has a lot of the same character, a lot of black cherry, plum, oak, vanilla. And so it's aged in oak. This one's been aged in oak for about 12 months. And we say, when we say that, we're talking about, you know, 59 gallon barrels that they're aging in. And predominantly French and American, but predominantly French. And I got a really nice um, the oak. Really stands out nicely. Um, and now that we're mo moving into the reds, firmer tannins. Even even the uh, the Merlot from Past Rebels tends to have some backbone to it. Not comp not uh, you know it's softer than Cabernet, but it's just it's not wimpy at all. It's got really really great color. Nice balance in the mouth. Those flavors come through of the, the red and black fruits. And it's got a nice lingering finish. Great alternative to Cabernet. I mean, it's a stand, they're standalone wines on their own, but if someone's a real Cabernet fan, they would love this wine. Uh, moving into the Cabernet. The 2018 vintage. Um, I would say Cabernet is what's really put Paso Robles on the map. Uh, just the, the day night difference in temperatures really helps the, the, the grapes mature in a nice uh, balanced fashion. We are also using grapes from both our east side and west side vineyards of the Appalachian. So, you know, we have different kinds of terrain of higher elevations, uh, some uh, sandy old river bottoms and, and ancient uh, seabeds. So this one is actually really neat because it's got um, Malbec and Syrah added to it for uh, added complexity. And depth of flavor. It's got a uh, well rock again where a little bit cooler area but still warm enough to really bring up the Cabernet fl flavors, but it, uh, the well rock tends to have more color and a little more tan into it. So we, we balance that out with some of the other areas. Stone Throw Vineyard is right around the winery. And then also Hog Can is near there too. But blackberry, black currants. Uh, the, the thing about Paso also is the, the fruit is really forward, it's not, not Annoyingly forward, but it's there and uh, some people might think oh, it's it, it makes it an easier drinking uh, Cabernet than some areas it may not age well. Well, we have uh, wine, Wines in our cellar from the 80s and they are still drinking fantastically So even though they have that real accessibility young they do they do uh, they last quite a while Mm. Get a little hint of 
A raspberry also in the mouth. <laughs> you see me puckering up a little bit. You know, I'm not eating any food with this. It's definitely got a little more tan structure than the, than the Merlot did, but you, know, you can feel that kind of scraping on your top of your mouth with your tongue. But really, really, really well balanced. Just also 92 points on a tasting panel, 90 points for the wine enthusiast. This is really a, a Cabernet that over delivers. And all oh, the aromas, really fantastic. Also aged 18 months in oak, so a little more oak time. So you get that nice slow oxidative process from being in the barrels. Uh, picked ripe and it's about 13 and a half alcohol. Hmm, I can smell that all day. Yeah, definitely with your heartier meals, but super enjoyable. Probably with some soft cheeses also. Uh, Zinfandel, one of the grapes that I really love uh, for many reasons. It's super versatile. Uh, we, you know, in the past we made white Zinfandel. We made a sparkling wine with the Zinfandel. Uh, you made uh, uh, Zinfandel blends like the Zinfusion, and then we also do single vineyard lots. But so it's, it's a grape that has really, really shows a terroir from where it's from. In our state, which this is also CCF, which is great, um, we try to keep a nice uh, dinner table style uh, Zinfandel. So we, we may use uh, different lots from different vineyards in any given year to, to get to that style. But big, but not overly big. I'd say a notch down from our Zinfusion. But one thing we do tend to have is pretty good alcohol in Zinfandels, just because of the, the nature of how the grapes ripen. They're... Um, in the same in one cluster, you can have slightly green berries, really ripe berries, and then even some some berries that are uh, that are raisining. So it's it's a it's an interesting uh, combination of of uh, things that are happening. Also, a ninety point wine with a wine enthusiast. Our team, my making team, has really nailed it uh, down, and and we we believe farming organically. Uh, Let's the flavors really come out in the grapes. We also do biodynamic farming, and uh, I think those are two things that keep us keep us sharp as growers, and then uh, helps the the grapes develop and, and to, to their fullest potential. So Zen uh, really has more red raspberry you know, characters to it, really strong, and also a little spiciness to it. And I think the spiciness comes predominantly from the Primitivo clone that we're using. We're using both Primitivo clones and Zinfandel clones uh, to produce this wine. And then we always like to add back a little Petit straw for, for color and, and bigger mouth feel. Alcohol tends to be a little higher because we pick it right, but let's see what this one is. It's probably, yep, close to 15%. But it's what's beautiful about it is even though it has 15%, Alcohol, it does not taste hot or feel hot in the mouth at all. Mm, that, that alcohol gives a, a nice thick thickness and body to the to the wine. It's super delicious. Notch down in tannin from both of these two, but also plenty to go with some pretty hearty meals. Great afternoon evening barbecue in the summer. Mm. Man, that, I just love the aromas. In our taste room, Zinfandels are probably our biggest seller, just because once people get it in their hands and smell it and taste it, the, the lingering after uh, finish, after you've swallowed it, is just really beautiful. Mm. Yeah, and you know that's a that's a, a real quick look at our our estate uh, lineup, uh, multiple ninety point uh, winners from uh, wine judges and uh, critics. Uh, super uh, wines to enjoy anytime, and uh, yeah, I think any, anybody would be wise to put it in their in their quiver. So, hey, thanks for listening. Um, maybe we'll go through the reserves next time. Take care. Cheers.